Today's guest is a former athlete, a medical doctor, international speaker, a best-selling author and television personality. He is also a brain cancer survivor and an advocate for organics. Thank you for joining the program, Dr. John Tickell. Natalie, it's a pleasure. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we wanted to get started with a conversation about something that is really affecting not only Australia, but first world countries across the globe, and that's childhood obesity. So what are the rates of obesity in children in Australia? Well, over the last 20 years, they've increased from, let's call, obesity is a BMI number, which is scientific. So let's call overweight, let's cancel the word obesity. Mm -hmm. There's a nice word, but cancel. And we'll call it overweight because that's nicer. Okay, so you have an overweight child. Now you're one of 25 to 30% of little kids. So 25 to 30% of Australians' babies and kids are overweight. And that compared to 20 years ago is off the scale. I mean, it used to be 10% 20 years ago, and now it's 25 to 30%. So something is going wrong. So here's my question. When I was doing the research for this interview, what are the levels of obesity in adults in Australia? They're worse than kids. So we do know that overweight children do become overweight uh, adults. And in Australia now, more than 50% of Australian adults, like in America, are overweight. And that's leading to, a well, it's a disaster. It, it's a, a fire of diabetes type 2 type 2 diabetes is the greatest growing epidemic in human history talk about epidemics of viruses and that i mean diabetes is number 1 it's it's out of control Natalie. and so diabetes 65% of diabetics die from heart disease so most diabetics die from a heart attack early and the strokes and there's other artery diseases so diabetes and the other thing diabetes causes is blindness Right, so you know the, the biggest cause diabetes is a runaway disaster. So why aren't we doing something about it? Okay, so first of all, if we go back just a step, these children are they obese because they or overweight because they have parents that are overweight and they are being fed the wrong foods or they're learning bad habits or what? How is this happening? Well, parents don't want me to say this, but eighty percent of overweight children come from overweight adults. Babies are bigger today than they were 20 years ago. The average baby weight in the Western world now has gone up 20 to 30%. So, oh, your baby's over. Oh, no, 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 That's it. the baby fat will come off. <laughs> will it? <laughs> no, it won't. So in a genetic performance thing, we're having bigger babies, but then they arrive. I'll tell you what, when you go down to the supermarket in LA, Natalie, there's a whole row, a whole sh the shelves full of baby food. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been with my two medical doctor kids to over 100 countries on this planet, and the planets, the countries in the planet, the normal weighted babies do not have baby foods. I mean, they just want to eat what adults do. You mash it up and you pour a bit of milk in the door. So, I mean, this unbelievable commercialism of baby food is just ridiculous. So the first thing you have a baby, you build the baby's immunity. It's called breastfeeding. That's way in front of cow's milk and stuff. And then you start feeding it real foods. And I don't mean, there's a word we use in Australia called crap. Do you know what that means, Natalie? It's, commercial, it's commercially refined and processed. So... I'll give you a little bit later four rules of nutrition, of good nutrition. And one of the biggest rules of nutrition is basic versus bonus. Now, basic foods are plant foods. Mm -hmm. Bonus foods are not. So the two-thirds, one-third rule, a baby, an adult, a grandparent, anyone should be eating more plant food than flesh food. But, yeah, we go to a restaurant and we have a steak that's over overlapping the sides of the plate and you've got to pay extra in a high-class restaurant, you've got to pay extra for the broccoli. <laughs> I mean, are we stupid or what? If you go to a Mar and Park Malaysian or Vietnamese restaurant, they don't charge you extra for the carrots and broccoli. So we have this strange appreciation of food that we've got to eat meat, we've got to eat flesh, and the vegetables are aside. In the countries that live the longest and are the healthiest and have the normal weighted babies, plant is more important than flesh. So 
The other thing is happening in America and now in Australia, half of meals are not prepared in the home. So it's eat out or take out or take away. Now, when you eat out, you eat more, you eat more salt, more sodium. Mm -hmm. That makes you more thirsty. And so do you know any kids who go to Macca's or KFC and have seven glasses of water? No. I, what, what, what do they drink? They drink soft drinks, They soda. That's the highest input of excess sugar for kids is in sodas. Now, oh, mum, you know, supermarket, oh, and you just need a cu couple of bottles of lemon, you know, whatever, uh, so, or orange aid or something. It's sh sugar, it's sugar, it's sugar. So we eat differently when we go out. So if half the meals we prepare are not prepared at home, what hope have our kids got of growing up with a normal weight? The other thing, obviously, Natalie, is the mechanisation and the IT development of phones, computer games. I mean, kids live. I mean, now in, what, fourth grade, sixth grade, they have to have a computer. You can't go out and draw on the blackboard. No, you've got to, you've got to sit there. So we're sitting. You, do you know that 90% of people in the Western world spend 90% of their time sitting, lying, sleeping. We don't move. And this was going to lead to one of my next questions. We've seen lockdowns around the world and in Melbourne, some of the harshest lockdowns that any of the countries around the world had seen during the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Now, I understand the need to socially distance and, and stay away from other people so that we're not spreading uh, this virus. But one of the things that the government implemented was uh, the restriction of going outside, even for exercise. So you could only go outside for one hour a day and we're being told, do the right thing, stay inside and watch Netflix. But realistically, was that a good thing to do because if we already have this epidemic of overweight children and parents and then you're telling them that they can't go outside for more than an hour a day and get fresh air and exercise and move and they're being told be good stay inside watch Netflix is that not creating a bigger issue well it depends when you look at the weather forecast see in Australia there's no bureau of meteorology that has a computer button to press that says it's partly sunny when I come to America, there's a paper called USA Today. You flip it on the back and there's all these states. A lot of partly sunnies. Now, if you see a few blue, well, clouds in the sky and there's blue, blue too, is that partly cloudy or partly sunny? So what you said is the Victorian government locked us up, but they let us out for one hour a day. To me, that's partly sunny. Why not go for a brisk walk for an hour a day and come home and do a few, you know, exercises with Jane Fonda or my wife or something when people say, oh, they locked me down, I couldn't exercise. Yes, you could. You could go for a walk for it. And I agree with that, but my point is it's limited. But the rest of the time these children... Well, as, as limited, limited. People don't go for a walk for even when there's no lockdown. They don't go for a walk for half an hour. They run around to the next office and say, tell them a joke or something. And now they don't run around to the next office. They send them a, a CC and the email. I mean, we do not move. You were born, Natalie, with 600 muscles and 180 joints. You were created to move. So wow. let me ask you this. How many hours do you sleep at night? Six, seven, eight? I probably sleep about eight if I can. Six if uh, I'm working really hard. Okay, so seven's average in the corporate world in America and Australia. So if you sleep for seven in 24 hours, that means you're awake for 17. Agreed? Yes. In, se in 17 hours, there's 34 half hours. So in a week, you are awake for 238 half hours. And people say to me, oh, Doc, I haven't got time to exercise. I said, how about you get out your diary and choose six of the 238 half hours you're awake for and make an appointment with yourself six times a week for half an hour to go for a walk. They go, oh, but but I say, but what? Let's get out your diary. So lockdown is a synonym for, oh, here's another excuse. Look, I, and, and I fully agree with that. We were talking before we started filming about the fact that I have a dog. I walk him at night, two hours every day, and then there are several walks throughout the day. I'm someone that has always moved because I have always taken joy in that. But I also grew up in Australia um, as a child that wasn't allowed to watch that much TV. So we spent our entire days outside yeah. playing in the uh, court that I grew up in with all the neighbours. And I think yeah. a lot of that is missing at the moment. 
My question in regard to lockdown is one hour a day of getting kids who have been sitting inside for let's say it's even 10 hours to get them up and move them is a difficult process. Whereas if we can put them outside for, you know, five hours, they're more likely to stay outside, get engaged in the game and all of that. So that that was where I was curious if you thought that maybe putting a time limit on it could have added to the, well, eh, it's only an hour, why would we? Well, your curiosity is valid. Now there's a but. The biggest rule in parenting, and I know a bit about it because Sue and I have five kids and 11 grandchildren, <laughs> the biggest rule, number one in parenting, is role modelling. So if you're going to go out for your half-hour walk, you know, you demand your kids don't watch TV. Well, demand they come and go for a walk with you. Oh, Mum, I don't want to do that. I said, well, bad luck. I don't want to eat my carrots. Well, they're there. If you don't eat your carrots, there's no dessert. I mean, there are certain rules, regulations, but role modelling is number one. Take your kid for a walk. Go and catch ball with your kid. Take a cr cricket bat out on the street like we used to, you know. I mean, we you, you said it. Natalie, we used to play in with the kids in the street. Oh, oh, no, 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 they might get dirty or they might fall over or they might get kidnapped, you know. I mean, how many kids in Australia got kidnapped last year playing cricket or footy in the street? None. Well, and it, look, and we have to be honest here, it's going to depend on which street you grow up, grew up on and all of that. We were in a very quiet little court and we were really lucky. I was not so lucky. I was only ever allowed to be a fielder while the bigger boys and my sisters played cricket because I was little, so I just was fetching the ball constantly. But, hey, I was always moving, <laughs> I was always moving and I was a part of the game. But, we, I mean, I really did live that childhood where it would get dark and mothers would come out of the front doors and yell for us to come home for dinner. Well, and the only time we were allowed to spend a day in front of the TV was if it was pouring with rain outside, at which point mum would say, okay, you can watch TV today. But the next day, TV was off and out we'd go again. And I think I think it is something that um, a lot of children are missing out on in the current day and age. And I think... And the other thing, Natalie, you brought up the going outside thing. I mean, Look at the world, the Western world. I mean, you've been to New York lately. I mean, how many parks are there except Central Park? People live in high-rise buildings of 50 storeys in boxes. I mean, where's your backyard? Um, and where's your cooking stuff? There's a microwave. I mean, how ridiculous are we? We live in 50-storey concrete blocks with no community. You know, you might have a neighbours meeting for an AGM once a year, but there's no backyard. And there's no oven. It's just a bloody microwave on the shelf. See, we're living a peculiar, stupid, ridiculous life. And that's the whole thing. So I, I live in a building at the moment and there are some families here and it's it has been difficult. And there are times where those of us who are working from home are trying to work and there are children trying to play in a courtyard, but it is essentially just a concrete area. There's nothing sort of enriching. And I, I felt for all of the people with children during lockdown who weren't able to put them out in the backyard and say, go play. No TV, yeah. you know. And well, you got it. But, but let, let's pretend you live on the 15th floor, the 15th storey, okay? You're allowed to go down to the ground floor with your kids and walk up 15 flights of stairs. And people say, oh, don't be stupid. I said, no, 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 you're being stupid. Why wouldn't you walk up two flights one day, three flights the next, four flights? You build up and then you're doing 15 flights three times a week. I mean, people say, don't be stupid. I said, no, don't you be stupid. Well, a lot of, a lot of health um, initiatives, they all talk about creating a pattern and it is, isn't it, or, or a um, habit to get something to feel like it's normal. And isn't it that it's three weeks to form the habit? Whenever you start a workout program, they say give it three weeks and that's when it becomes part of your routine. Yeah, it's a bit like you brought up a good point there, Natalie, because it's a bit like people go on a diet. Do you know what the acronym for diet is? Did I eat that? Yes, you did. For three, yes, you did for three weeks. Then you stop, then you put all the weight back on. To change your life, you need 91 days. You need three months for a habit to become a habit. Okay. So do you, do you like cleaning your teeth every night? I absolutely do. Well, most people don't like it, but they do it because it became a habit. How do they not like it? I realise that's not the point of what you're saying, but there's nothing better than the feeling of fresh teeth. 
A lot of adults don't like cleaning their teeth because they're missing a bit of Netflix or they could have had another beer or another glass of wine. I mean, this this thing up here, I don't know whether you realise this, Natalie, but, but the human being is built in three bits. Between here and your toes is for activity. That's where all the muscles and bones are. Mm-hmm. Um, up here, above your nose, is your brain. That's for thinking. That's so activity, coping. And this little hole in your middle, that gets into the most problems because we talk too much and eat too much. So if you're good at business and in life, you've got one mouth and two ears, listen more than you talk. You'll learn more and you'll be appreciated more. That's, that's why psychiatrists make a million dollars a minute because they sit there and they listen, right? And you're going, blah, 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 I've had this and this and this guy. And they say, hmm, mm, here's, here's a pill. Yeah. Now, we're going to have to wrap this conversation up. I feel like it's something that we could talk about for hours. Are there any tips that you could give some parents um, that want to change their habits for the better for themselves and their children? Yep. One, vegetables. Every recipe book I look at now is a recipe about how to hide your vegetables for you so the kids will eat vegetables. Why do you want to hide the best foods on earth? I mean, if you eat vegetables every night on your plate and you put little bits of Brussels sprouts and peas and carrot and pumpkin on their plate, little bits, and say, okay, let's eat dinner. <clears throat> then they say, oh, I don't like peas. And say, well, you're going to let to like them. You, you will get to like them, but you need to eat them for three months. Just three peas has a role modelling with vegetables, role modelling with activity, my wife's 70 something. She goes for a run twice a week. And, you know, the grandkids going, Hi, oh, Nanny, you're going for a run. Can we come? You know, because kids do what you do once and then it becomes a habit. So, activity, coping, eating, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There's a rule called HI, human interference. People say, Oh, how do you know what, what's good food and bad food? It's called human interference. You've got eight seconds to look at a food or a drink and work out how much a human being has interfered with it and wrecked it. Because the best foods in life are things that human beings haven't touched. They've just picked them or dug them out, out of the ground and, and heated them up a bit. You know? So, A, activity, you're a role, role model. Two, your eating is your veggies. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you eat veggies, they will eventually eat veggies. No, 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 you're not having a hamburger. No, no, you're going to have a hamburger once a month. Yep. It's full of salt and it's full of sugar and it's full of, you know, uh, saturated fat and all oh, what's saturated fat? It's the fat that fills your arteries up. Your arteries in your heart are one-fifth the width of your little finger. There's not much room in there. So why are you filling it up? Why do you want to have a heart attack when you're 43 instead of 83? Like, it, it's an interesting movement. So brain, mouth, body, role modelling. Amazing. Dr. John Tickell, thank you so much. And we are actually coming back with uh, another interview with you all about vaccinations.